quite good, except that every single commenter noted that the, it was the middle of winter and that the room had no heat. And so it was a four and a half hour concert in a freezing room featuring some of the most brilliant music of all time. But um, the, the choral fantasy was actually the entirety of the choral fantasy was premiered, but like I mentioned, only a few movements. And so if you're looking back at our repertoire for the fall concert, you may feel a little confused because we do have only two movements of seven movements of the Brahms Requiem. Only two and a half, some would say three movements of 30 of Messiah. <laughs> uh, we have Kurt Erickson's piece, of course. We have the entirety of Chichester Psalms. We have Finlandia, which we barely touched, you know, um, that we talked about. And it feels like a little bit of an odd concert. And so the whole point of this concert, um, the board wants me to give a little background, is that our fall concert and the spring concert were chosen very specifically to represent what ECCO is about. First of all, the fall concert has to do with our history, of course, over 50 years, which is very long for an organization. Uh, in fact, the longest youth orchestra, you know, um, it's been like 75 years. That's it. And so they talk about, I think, Young People Symphony Orchestra being the second oldest youth orchestra in the, you know, west of the Mississippi, and it's only 75 years old. And the BCCO is 50 years old. 50 years old, and that's quite a long tenure. And this concert is representative of our entire history of who we are and all the things that made up our experiences to become who we are. And so the first half of the concert starts with Eugene Jones's era, and the most popular piece, the most frequently performed piece during that era was Messiah. And we're, as you know, going to be performing the Worthy as a Lamb as well as the final element, but also the overture, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega of Messiah. And that is going to be opening the concert because that's where we came from. Arlene was only the second music director for the BCCO in this entire group. There have only been three music directors, and me having the shortest tenure, um, it's amazing to me that the organization has had 50 years with only three music directors, and again, like I said, me with only very, very few years. And so Arlene's last piece that I was lucky to be a part of, and many of you were um, in uh, the course directly were in attendance for, was of course her performance of Brown Charter with Joe, who is actually in the room today. You know, so <laughs> and so that's why, as you as you know and you remember, it's very meaningful to me as well as hopefully for you too that Joe will be conducting the Brahms as well as uh, doing the shows for the Brahms Requiem because that's going to be representative of the concert as a second piece on the program. Now the third section of the opening of our concert, the first half of our concert, is Kurt Erickson's work. And that is going to represent the three stages, mm -hmm. three eras of BCCO. It's beginning, the Arlene era, and where we are now. And as you know, this is a second commission that, um, sorry, the second sort of composition, um, um, composition contest that we've had. And Kurt Erickson, even though he lives in Napa, was chosen from nationally um, recognized composers all across the US, and very similar to our first composition competition. But the entire first half has to do with the three eras. It has to do with Eugene Jones, Arlene, and then where we are now. Okay? Now the second half of the concert in the fall has to do with who we are. And the Berkeley Community Chorus and Orchestra has always been a very special organization, both in its execution, both in who you are now, and one of the main reasons why I told the board and you when I was very interested to work with you all. Because the philosophy for the, the chorus exactly mirrors what I feel personally about music and what I also feel should be the model for all music in, that we experience. Is that every single one of us is an artistic being of some sort. For some reason, every single one of us as human beings connects to music, whether it's classical music or not, throughout all time. That does not have to do with just who we are in this room. But that's literally every single person that has ever existed in all history has had some connection to music at all time. And there's something about music that connects to us as human beings, as a species, as, as individuals, or whatnot. 
And the key thing is that there's a, there's a dichotomy that happens in classical music because there's always this discussion about the best classical musicians, the most technical, the most artistic, and everybody else. And so there's this discussion that most music organizations, musical organizations say, music should be all, but only the ones who are best should perform it. <laughs> and it becomes this big dichotomy because um, there's this debate often about, you know, only certain people can perform, or only certain people can have the background to even understand those performances or not. And BCCO's or, um, philosophy, which is what I feel deeply strong, uh, very strongly, and I hope you feel too, is that every single one of us has a valid artistic being inside of them. No matter what your experiences are, no matter what your backgrounds are. And that coming together, which is the very essence of music, as a community, as an ensemble, as a chorus, we can achieve great things. That's what the essence of community and society is, right? That's the whole reason why music predated language. That's the whole reason why your brain releases endorphins when you perform as an ensemble, when you perform music. Because there's a deep-seated reason for music to be important in our lives, right? And so the whole point of the second half of the concert is to tap into that. The very first thing that we're doing, or oh, sorry, in the, is we're going to be performing, right, uh, Finlandia, for instance, uh, not the very first thing in the second half of the concert, but Finlandia, as many of you know, BCCO had a long tradition of, of having the audience participate and sing, which was supposed to be an extension of the idea that regardless of background, again, that all of us should be able to perform. Not only able to listen to concerts, not only to be able to take concerts for no financial cost, that's the whole point, we give concerts completely free to us, but that every single one of us should have an opportunity to perform and to express ourselves in a community to create these large works, right? And so Finlandia, we're gonna be doing the entire orchestra work, we just had a discussion with some email, um, we're doing the entire work, and we're gonna have the entire audience join in on the concert. Because Finlandia, as you know, which is the unofficial, it's not the official, it's the unofficial <coughs> anthem, national anthem of Finland, of course. Um, it's not their official anthem, but it's, it's of course, uh, such a, it's so meaningful to them that it's their unofficial one. We're gonna be seeing this as an ensemble with the entire audience performing. The other part of the second half of the concert features all the BCCO organization has been in the community. So the women's chorus, many of you know, those have been lucky to be in the chorus, um, but there's a waiting list of about 200 people, uh, maybe more, to get into the chorus. Um, and that some of them have been on, a, on the waiting list for like years, almost decades. And so we started a chorus, the women's chorus that was led by Debbie Galano, that <laughs> uh, numbers <laughs> like in the dozens, hundreds, you know. And they're going to be performing during the concert because I'm outreach of uh, BCCO. There's a chamber chorus that you, many of you know has performed for BCCO and is our outreach wing. They are a chamber chorus that performs a very different repertoire, but is basically a way to go into community in areas that has not been able, that we have not been able to as a large chorus. Um, for instance, Cal Day. Um, uh, Jan and I have been talking about Cal Day and the logistics of possibly getting the entire chorus and orchestra to perform part of the, the war requiem um, for Cal Day, <laughs> which is logistically like 99.998% impossible, but we want to have some presence in it. And so, uh, you know, we've been talking about various ways to do so. But for those instances, we have BCCS, who is an autonomous whole by themselves, is also one of our outreach wings. And then of course, uh, many of you know that um, Berkeley High School has for 20, 25 years, has a huge high school orchestral program started by Karen um, Wells. Wells and Jen Davis. But Karen Wells originally at the beginning and it became so large that there's now two choruses, actually two orchestras, and they rehearse at, rehearse at zero hour plus some other times during the day. It's a huge program, but for several years there has been no chorus, which is ironically, um, uh, very ironic because orchestras t in schools tend to be very capital, um, they're very expensive things for high schools to be involved in. 
you have to have instruments. That's it. You have to have instruments. Whereas choruses, you have to have people. That's it. And so it's very odd that they didn't have the chorus. So Derek Ham, of course, our very first assistant conductor, um, during my career at least, um, you know, was tasked at trying to spark a high school chorus. There. And we're very excited because, you know, it's not quite stable yet. They have a chorale, a high school chorale, that's going to be performing in one of the nights. And then finally, of course, during the last evening, it's the Chichester, Chichester Psalms by Bernstein. And again, this is our centerpiece for the concert. But the most important part to me is two things. Bernstein wrote it when he was about 50, which is great for our anniversary. Coincidentally, I was not chosen specifically for that, but it was a very happy coincidence. But most importantly, Bernstein was one of the American composers that's very American in the fact that all of his experiences, musical and personal, went into his compositions directly. So we talked about the fact that he was in the middle of writing a musical, right? You know that he was in the middle of writing a musical called East Side Story at the time, <laughs> uh, before he couldn't get it produced, and he changed it to West Side Story. Uh, you know, it was originally about, uh, uh, it was originally, because he was, you know, he, he was what they call Jew-ish, right? <laughs> he wasn't quite Jewish, he was Jew-ish. Uh, uh, it was originally about a Catholic girl and a Jewish boy, and how the difficulties between the two religions made it difficult for their two families to reconcile. And it didn't sell. They couldn't produce, they couldn't find a producer. And then finally they found, um, he was opening up the morning paper one day, and he said, and it, the, te the title of the, uh, the, the A1, the above the fold headline, basically said, gangs are taking over the west side of New York. And he's like, oh, <laughs> that's what this music should be about. And so it became about a girl and a boy from two different gangs, and because the gangs were on the <coughs> west side of New York, it became changed from west side, east side story to west side story. But um, in any case, like I said, Chichester Psalms, everybody views as this great liturgical work of incredible depth. And as we talked about, it came because Bernstein had a musical that he couldn't produce, and he had this fantastic music that he couldn't, uh, uh, he had nowhere to go. And when this chorus basically asked him to write a piece, he said, oh, you know what? I've already half composed it. <laughs> but as you know, it's half jazzy, it's half musical, it's half liturgical, and it's 100% Bernstein. And it's a straight representative, a, a representation of who we are. Because this chorus is not only made of the chorus's history over 50 years. Some of you have uh, uh, been a part of most of it, or maybe even all of it. But it's all about your experiences with music. Because every single time we come to a rehearsal, it's your musical background that contributes to the music making that happens every single week, right? And it's your musical background that contributes to eventually the performances that we hear. And that's why the Bronze Requiem is not the same every single time we're performing. And that's why it's a lie, even though it's over 100 years, 100, it's close to 100, and like 30, 34 years, or whatnot. It's because every single time we perf it's every single time the Bronze Requiem, the Messiah, is performed, Finlandia is performed, it's a different chorus that performs it. It's a different experience, it's a different person who you are every single day. And so the music making that happens on these Mondays is part of the entire process. And the, the audience that gets to listen to it during our three short concerts gets to participate in the music making that we've had through the entire semester. And that's what this concert is about. It's about the history of BCCO, but it's about who we are that led from the history that we've had. The first half is about three eras. The current era, Arlene, uh, um, and Eugene Jones, right? And then the second half is about who we are as an organization. Because unlike most organizations I know, you know, we have calls, the board has calls, I have calls from organizations across the US that basically ask, you know, you have a very unique model when it comes to choruses. How do you do this? And we say, Oh, first of all, well, basic things, the concerts are free. And they're like, oh, <gasps> the concerts are free? How do you make money? And I say, well, you know, somebody puts on a Phantom of the Opera mask, 
and, and uh, somehow it just gets done. You know, like, okay. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> and you know, and um, you know, it's a very unique organization. But to me, like I said to the board when I was auditioning, and I actually said to you during my audition itself. The thing is that many, many organizations have the mission that music should be available for all. And that's true. Music should be available for all. But in its execution of that mission is how we distinguish ourselves from other organizations. Because not only music is, music is all for the fact that we don't have auditions. And that's not a detriment, that's not a positive, that's a fact, is that our philosophy is that through a community we can do whatever. We can achieve the Britain War Requiem, the War Requiem, Mas uh, you know, Messiah, <laughs> uh, Elijah, which, you know, <laughs> when, when the board heard, you know, like, Elijah has 25 choruses, <laughs> like, you know, we just finished the Brown track, we had seven. <laughs> How are we getting to 25? And yet, I think that some of, some of you, a lot of you said afterwards that the, Brown, the Elijah, Mendelssohn's Elijah, was one of the most prepared they felt for a concert. Right, which is fantastic. Um, um, the fact that we can achieve this as, a, as an organization is, is really quite stupendous. But the idea that's not only in in attendance that you can participate in music making, but that's in performance. That would, is what distinguishes this organization from every single other. San Francisco Symphony, Berkeley Symphony, some other orchestras across the US are starting to do this. They have community plays. Berkeley Symphony has their annual performer series. Some of you may have seen it, I mean those. San Francisco Symphony has been dabbling with the performer of the symphony where they have all the cello section of the San Francisco Symphony lead. Every single member of the, uh, any single person that plays the cello, you can perform with it. But the idea to perform, you know, and express yourself artistically <coughs> is a really important part of uh, music making. And it's why Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, Bach, all were known as performers and improvisers as well. Bach was known more as an improviser than he was as a composer, flat out. When he was hired in you know, his last job, they were really sad because they didn't get Telemann. <laughs> Telemann wrote 3,000 cantatas, Bach wrote 300. There's even notes in the city council meetings that say, we are a very poor city because we had to deal with Bach, and we couldn't. We didn't have the stature to hire uh, to hire Telemann, right? The same thing. Brahms was a performer, right? He would be sitting in bars, and people would come up to him and be like, "Hey, Brahms, why don't you play us a tune on the piano?" And his friends would get really upset, and Brahms would just sit down on the piano because he was like, "I, I like playing piano." <laughs> his best days were playing in a, broth in a brothel when he was seventeen. You know what I mean? Just, uh, not the fact that it was a brothel, the fact that he just could focus on the music. <laughs> but the idea, again, as performers, every single one of you, some of you, I say this in grand applications, might have sung with the San Francisco Symphony for 20 years. That's great. Your voice is just as valid as somebody who's sung in their, you know, shower for 20 years. <laughs> um, but the point is that despite our backgrounds, or because of our backgrounds, that we can perform the great works of Brahms, Mozart, Britain, which is a very, very difficult, difficult piece. Like as we've mentioned, only organizations as large as San Francisco or some very ambitious courses um, will take on the Britain War Requiem, which is why it's not as performed as it is, it should be. And we're going to take that opportunity to obviously uh, take the mantle and say, we can do this too. Um, so, in any case, um, I'm very excited because this concert, as eclectic as it is, is a true representation of what this organization is. And this organization is not only made up of history, but like I said, it's made up of you. It's made up of all the individuals in your backgrounds, the first time you were touched by music, the first time that you sung in an organization, the first time that you performed as part of an organization, maybe as part of UCCL. And so that's what this concert's about. The first half, about who we are, is our history, the second half of what we do. The second half is, like I said, the organizations we spawn, Finlandia opening up to all, and Chichester Psalms, what we can achieve. And it's just happy coincidence, I really didn't plan it like this, but 
um, to the audience, I might say that we planned it directly, um, that Chichester Psalms, again, is a representation of uh, who we are as American performers and who Bernstein was as a performer. So that being said, we have the opportunity to speak directly to an American composer right here. <laughs> um, so to say, Napkin, um, those are people from Napa. <laughs> Not my turn. <laughs> and I, I must admit, Kurt recently moved to Napa like five years ago, six years ago? I think so, yeah. Five or six years ago. So he, he's new to that term. <laughs> um, but um, I think it should be a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to start with the third movement of Erickson. Oh, to be an angel. 